Hey everyone, it's been uh, requested for a while um, to do a little walk around on my KTM 350 EXCF. Um, so this is a little different than what I normally do. Um, I think starting soon I'll try and do a couple vlogs for you guys and kind of show you a little bit more behind the scenes action. Um, and just more about the riders and motorcycle culture here in Milwaukee. Um, so first I thought I'd do a walk around on my uh, bike and kind of show you everything that's done to it. Um, so I bought this bike back in 2017. Um, it's a 2013 uh, KTM 350 EXCF. And it was very different. It was uh, orange. It was in mostly dirt trim at the time and almost everything that's done to it now is different than back in the day. Um, so if you would have remembered when I was, when I owned my WR450F, that was my main supermoto. And then I ended up getting rid of the 450 and use this as my full-time supermoto and enduro bike. And then I eventually picked up my KTM 200 two-stroke which is now my full-time enduro bike. And now this bike is my full-time supermoto. So first things first, um, a little bit more about the mechanicals of this bike. Um, I ride it a lot, so it does rack up a lot of hours on it. Um, I have around 300, I had around 380 hours on it when I decided to go ahead and check the valves. So that was the first maintenance I ever did was at 350 hours, um, a little under 10,000 miles, um, and a simple valve check and figured out that the exhaust valve was a little bit leaky, um, a little bit tight, so we shimmed it, uh, loosened it up a little bit, hopefully uh, wouldn't stick. So after riding it for about up to 420 hours um, was well into uh, this past winter and I decided to actually sell the bike um, as you see I didn't sell the bike I actually decided well I'll get it rebuilt so with a bike right now that's sitting at around 450 hours I decided to send it into uh, Goreki Power Sports and get a fresh top end and bottom end rebuild. Um, so that involved um, piston, piston rings, um, valves, uh, valve guides, seals, um, as well as into the bottom end. Um, we got a new crank end case bearings, a uh, new rod repair kit, um, and some other goodies to freshen up the bottom end. Um, so it's been a night and day difference. Um, the only other mods I've had on this 350 are um, the Dirt Tricks cam chain tensioner, which is a must. The stock hydraulic system in this bike uh, tends to fail um, pretty much any any time. Um, I was lucky and was able to get to around 350 hours before I had to replace it. That was the first big issue. Um, other big issue that came up was a uh, starter motor. Um, as you see, the starter motor kind of looks pretty new. If I can focus in on it. No. But the starter motor, I just put in recently. And um, it really helps the bike start much better now. Um, I must have been riding around for quite a while with a bad one. Um, a little bit more into the mods. Um, so over the years, people asked, oh, when did you put the recluse in? Well, I actually bought the bike with a recluse clutch um, in it back in 2017 when I bought this new. And my thoughts on the recluse, um, you know, it's it's nice for cross country enduro or if you're doing a long, a lot of long days worth of riding, I think it's awesome. Um, if your hand gets tired or you make a mistake, you won't kill the bike at all. Um, my only complaint with the recluse is that sometimes you forget it's in gear when you start it and it can you know result in it go striding away on you um other issues is if you're stuck on a hill climb 
I noticed that since it's free plays in any gear, so you can start it in first through sixth gear from a stop, and it'll roll forward, um, kind of like a moped. Um, but if you're stuck on a hill, steep up, you can't just lock it in gear um, like any other bike and, you know, kind of maneuver yourself around. You got to be on the brakes or you just got to keep the bike on the hill dropped. Um, so that's one thing I don't like about it. Um, I learned how to do clutch work, stunt riding on my 450, and that was probably one of the hardest bikes to learn it on. So I've kind of transitioned that over. As you see in some videos, I can do uh, dual fingers on it as well. Um, besides that, it's actually got a stock exhaust with uh, KTM and Husky end cap. And everything you see on this bike has been powder coated by Wiscoat refinishing and uh, Modified Cycles right out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And that is run by uh, Super Modified on Instagram. Um, so a little bit into the powder coat. Um, I have custom powder coat wheels done by Modified. Um, they're a little bit rashed up already since I put this bike to the paces. Um, but we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, so we decided to go with a fade. Um, from flat back to a silver um, and then I've retained the same blue nipples and blue hubs as I did um, last year um, so other things on the bike um, I have a custom graphics kit by rival Inc um, so completely custom I ordered and you know went through probably about four revisions which took around you know one to two weeks working with them over email to get it exactly how I wanted. Um, so I wanted to go with this uh, prism type pattern, which got really popular through the Grenzgänger crew um, in Germany, as well as uh, other things I've seen on Instagram. So I wanted it to be a little bit more unique. Um, to change it up a little bit more, I actually decided to go with a 2019 KTM front fender and number plate and in order to make that work you need a special bracket um, which I believe is available by Flatland Racing that allows you to run the adapter so now that I run the number plate I actually um, run a lot works headlight and now this is probably the best lighting upgrade you can have for a motorcycle or a dual sport um, what I love about this light is, you know, you can see anything. I mean, it, it lights up the sky. So I've uh, kind of put in a hidden switch on this. As you can see, it's still pretty bright right now, but you should see this at night. It's just, it's just amazing. The video can't do justice. Um, another thing, now that we're up at the bars, on the front brake, I have a Magura hc1 12 millimeter and this is from the moto store and if we go to the other side i have another hc1 13 millimeter for my handbrake as well as a midwest mountain engineering clutch lever so this is a shorty mid-length clutch lever and what's nice about this is on the ktms you run into clearance issues right here. And this allows you to run these closer than the stock system without them hitting. So it's definitely a great upgrade coming from a bike that had cable clutches with RSCs and uh, you know shorty stunt levers. It's definitely been a big upgrade. Um, grips, I'm running ODI grips. Uh, they're the lock on and come fresh with a new throttle tube every time So they always keep it nice and crisp and clean um, Another thing is 50 stunt bar ends And now that we talk about the handbrake, um, I'll show you the system that I got So the system that I'm currently running is a stock caliper right here that's for the foot brake and this is uh, a heat dissipation um, heat sink for 
brake fluid in the brake line so it helps cool down the foot brake um, i've noticed that i've never had issues with losing the foot brake or burning over which is or boiling over which has been you know something good if you're really in the coasting um, right here we got the sv 650 uh, front right side caliper upgrade um, that i did on top of the stock 50 stunt bracket um, so in order to run you can run upgraded calipers on the 50 stunt um, so like the first one people go with is the ninja 650r which is the most common um, which i believe is like a two millimeters upgrade over whereas i think the sv650 is like four to six upgrade so it's slightly bigger than the other ones and all you have to do is drill these holes out to the bolt size and then um, you have to kind of um, you kind of got to trim it a little bit in each direction um, this one i believe went up a little bit and this one i believe went down um, to really account for um, just a slight difference um, there is but otherwise there's really good coverage on this caliper um, definitely a huge upgrade with a Maguro 13 millimeter if you're doing stunt riding um, there's no point in using the bigger brake setups in my opinion um, this is perfect enough and it allows you to retain the stock foot brake is which what I enjoy most um, so a little bit more about stunt parts uh, so what I'm running on here is a flat out fab custom KTM 12 bar um, so this one I kind of designed with flat out fab um, based off of my WR 450s design um, I wanted something that was just an exoskeleton which is easy to take off um, so you can take it off on this bolt this frame bolt um, and then on the other side the frame bolt as well as another mount right here that goes through the subframe as you see right there both sides um, so it's easy to drill through you trim the fender plastics um, while we're down here um, I already have the Lotworks tail light hooked up and then we got our titanium um, what I like most about this 12 bar system is that it's not straight back to the to the bar or it's to the tail so you can it still allows you to scrape without smacking the bar so it can go up pretty far um, before you're really hitting which is something i think is important on a stunt bike because if you are you know laying scrapes all the time or hitting some rough streets the last thing you want to do is you know hit your hit your 12 bar all the time otherwise you're going to end up with you know fracturing your subframe and and really messing up all these um messing up all these uh brackets and and threads um, another thing here we have is my spring is powder coated as well blue um, to match the whole system um, kickstarter people ask me what kind of kickstarter that is i just polished it up one day uh, if you take metal polish and flits and uh, you know steel wool and, and really polish it down um, it'll come out pretty shiny I never use a kickstarter ever really um, P3 carbon um, cover and these sliders are actually what came with the bike um, they are I believe KTM brand sliders, really easy to put on and take off. Um, they do great work in protecting the bike. Um, seat here is done by Thrill Seekers. Um, so I wanted something to match the teal of the bike and that's something that Thrill Seekers and Rival, you know, with the graphics, have been able to match the teal front fender very well. And the most recent upgrade I've done thus far is it's a Cherby's 3.1 gallon gas tank. And so this gas tank um, is just about half a gallon bigger than stock. Um, I've been testing it out lately and I should get around 140 miles per tank. 
which is a lot for you know for the average uh, day city use um, but I did recently do a twisty ride in the last video I made for you guys that you know I I didn't have to fill up at all that day or went 130 miles and didn't have to touch a pump until I got back home so that's what I really love about the bike um, one of the best upgrades I think you can do for any supermoto is a stabilizer um, I forgot what the brand is of this but um, the stabilizer allows me to push it all the way to left and it's much harder harder to pull and swing this around which is makes it great for high speed and um, like freeway riding I can I usually run it in the middle so it's a little bit looser but not extremely loose um, for the road where I can keep it pretty stable um, I can spin this to the right and it's extremely loose which is nice for nice for lot riding or you know city driving but I, I, I really don't have it right there as much so I keep it right in the middle which has some good resistance um, so yeah I'm running on a 13 tooth front sprocket and um, 45 tooth rear sprocket um, so I've been able to retain um, some fairly good speed um, with that setup been able to you know cruise nicely at 70 miles an hour as well as do all the stunt riding i want to do um to keep it slow and the chain we're running on i believe is a bike master o-ring um, or x-ring black and gold chain uh, which i think is a very nice touch to the bike um, other things is we're running the recluse slave master with um with a recluse clutch, which is necessary. Um, I got pull us board, uh, plastic side covers um, to protect from the tusk shifter from busting through. So you have seen it's taken a couple impacts, um, but overall it's, you know, haven't had any issues recently leaking. Otherwise, uh, you know, definitely like to thank you know, a couple of people for helping me, you know, over the years really keep the sport moving. Um, so, you know, my group, Milwaukee Supermoto, um, we've been riding since 2012. Um, and really over the years, it's just been too much fun. Uh, we're just a group of riders that get out of all ages and, and you know, get together and just do rides and off road and plan bigger trips. And um, a lot of these guys are my best friends and you know, you know, friendship goes more than riding. Um, other people I'd like to thank is Modified Cycles. Um, so they are also Wiscoat. Um, so I want to thank him for all the powder coating that I've done to this bike, um, as well as refinishing on, um, on some of these uh, metal parts that I have as well. Um, another thing as well, uh, the motor store the motor store has been clutched for you know all your magura handbrake and front brake needs as well as lot works has been you know a big big sponsor and you know keeping the lighting game good um, so we do a lot of night riding a lot of times uh, you know i put this light through a ton of abuse and it's held up great you know it's 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 been awesome but yeah to top it all off um you know i got my fresh dirty pair of undies only gets cleaned once a year so you'll see over the course of all the videos of it getting messier and messier but all right guys uh thanks for for uh watching i uh, hope you like this style of video um i just filmed this off of my iphone so um next uh we'll do a little bit of riding today uh, maybe i'll start talking to the camera maybe not i don't have a mic set up yet but we'll see what happens all right thank you